My dear friends, welcome to the world of physics. So dear friends, now I would like to just recall what we got learned in our first chapter of force. All we know in the first chapter of force, we have been learned about two different types of forces like contact forces and as well as forces at a distance. So under the contact forces, we got learned about four different types of forces like muscular force, normal force, tensional force, last but not least frictional force. On the other hand, my dear friends, we got learned about very important three laws which exist around us like gravitational force, electrostatic force, last but not least uh, magnetic force. So today I would like to be explain about a force of friction. Friction, a kind of force, really explains a vital role in our daily life activities. So, now I am going to explain about friction. Before the explanation of friction, let me take a simple example. From that simple example, we can understand very well about friction. For that, let me take Table which had a smooth surface. At any one end of this smooth surface, we need to place a block which is made up of wood. Over the black, let me exert an external force which is denoted with capital F. So here let me explain once again. I was taking a table which had smooth surface. Over any one end of the table, I was kept. I was placed a block of wood. Upon that block of wood, in any one direction, let me apply an external force capital A by any means. So, what we would expect, my dear friends, our common sense says that. After application of force F, the block will start its motion. Obviously. So, after application of an external force capital F, after a pint of time T, the block is going to be moves at moves certain distance, is going to achieve certain distance, and it is going to stop its motion. So let me take the distance covered after application of force F after T times of second. The distance covered let me take as capital S. So I would like to ask you a question to all of which force is making the black to stop its motion? Obviously. There should, be, there should be a force should exist in order to stop the motion of black because in order to move a black we require a force means in order to stop the motion of black also we require a force that force is nothing but known as force of friction this force of friction always exists in between the surface of surface of which surface in the sense bottom bottom surface of the black and and the top surface of the table in between the two surfaces there exists a force of friction which is being denoted with small f always acts opposite in direction with applied force so dear friends from this example 
easily we can define what does force of friction in the sense. So let me explain. The friction is nothing but known as it is an opposing force which opposes always which opposes always relative motion of the body so here from this we can define friction friction is nothing but known as a force which is known as opposing force which opposes always relative motion of the body so force of friction is nothing but known as a kind of friction kind of force which always try to resist the movement of body so from this example now we got to understand very well about frictional force but there is another way also my dear students in order to learn about the friction in detail by using free body diagram so what does free body diagram means let me explain so free body diagram so free body diagram is nothing but one as a figure or a diagram which shows the sum of the all algebraic forces called being acting on the body so let me explain free body diagram by using free body diagram how can we describe force of friction with an example further let me take a table which has smooth surface over the surface of the table let me place a object which had mass spawn time so here in that example i was taking a table over the surface of the table a object is being placed which had mass small m and in our first lesson we already learned dear students when a object is being placed what kind of object it is stationary object stationary object in the sense an object which is said to be at rest so when the a stationary object which had mass m is being placed on the surface of table what forces are being acting on it we people know very well one force which is being acting vertically downwards due to its weight so weight of the body which have mass m acts vertically downward from the point of contact another force is going to be act vertically up which we call it normal force why we would call it as normal force simple because the solid surface from the point of contact solid surface in the sense stable from the point of contact it is going to be exert a force on the block which has mass m along the vertical direction means along the normal that's why the force exerted by the solid surface and block which have mass m is known as normal force so along the vertical direction we are able to see clearly along the vertical direction there are being two forces are being acting there are two forces are being acting on the block which have mass m so now let me calculate the net force which is acting vertically so first we know along the vertical direction first force due to it due to the weight of the object which is being acting vertically downward must be equal to the the force which is being acting vertically up which is nothing but known as normal force then only that body is said to be stationary state so when the weight of the ob object which we call it a kind of force and the normal force exerted by the solid surface from this we can conclude both forces are being equal in magnitude opposite in direction then only the body is said to be state of stationary so let me explain dear students that uh, net force which is acting along the vertical direction 
which implies n minus w is equal to 0. So from this, what we can conclude means, because of the net force which is being acting on the object which have mass m, that object is being said to be at first. And now, let me go for along the horizontal direction. So, let me exert a forward force in one direction. So, in this direction, upon the block. So, what we would expect? Common sense says, common sense says, it is going to move in the direction of applied force. Listen to me here carefully. If it is not going to move, after even application of force, this block is not going to move in the direction of the applied force. We have to be understand there exists another force in between the surface of the block and surface of the table called frictional force, which is being denoted with small f. So along the horizontal direction also, two forces are being acting. So let me write here the terminate force which is being acting horizontal. So one force which is acting towards the right side of the plan is capital F which is known as applied force or forward force or external force. Must be equal to the frictional force which is acting towards the left side of the wooden plan. So which implies so F minus small f must be equal to 0. So when does the applied force and the force of friction are being equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, we can understand along the horizontal direction also net force is going to be act on the object must be equal to 0. So dear friends, so from this what we can conclude in the sense along the vertical direction and as well as along the is horizontal direction, there are four forces are being acting, but the net force must be equal to zero in the sense that uh, black neither it moves up along the vertical direction nor it moves down, nor it moves right side along the direction of horizontal, either it moves uh, left side. So then, this kind of state of the black is said to be state of equilibrium. So this is the way to understanding about the force of friction. And dear friends, now let me explain about uh, the advantages and as well as disadvantages of the frictional force. In our first chapter of force, all we, all we learned actually about the advantages of the frictional force. So what are the uses of uh, frictional force in the sense? You know very well. Let me write, let me explain initially about the advantages. So what are the advantages? So why it is useful? Why it is helpful? Of course, frictional force is sometimes helpful, sometimes uh, it can, uh, what we call, not useful also. So let me explain first advantages. Like after that, let me explain disadvantages of frictional force. So you know, advantages. Dear strength where friction plays a vital role. In order to work, the people must require frictional force. In order to construct a building, also we require frictional force. In order to even drive a nail into the wall, must be required a frictional force. In order to stop the motion of an object, also we require frictional force. In order to turn a vehicle, also must be required frictional force. In order to hold the electronic appliances like bulb, whatever tester, they require a frictional force. So these are the common advantages uh, of a frictional force. Now let me explain. So this is a thing, new thing to you people. What are the disadvantages? The disadvantages of the frictional force is simple. You know, in automobiles, they produce sometimes noise. You know why it was? In, as inside the automobiles, uh, there will be as moving inner parts. Inside the moving inner parts of a machine, frictional force increases in the sense, obviously they give a more sound. So this is one of the disadvantages of the frictional force. And wear and tear of machines also causes because of frictional force. And very important uh, uh, disadvantage of frictional force, what you know dear students? which is nothing but known as 
in automobiles, if the frictional force increases in the inner moving parts of a machine, really the automobiles, means vehicles, are going to be consumed more amount of fuel energy. Obviously, from this we can understand is uh, sometimes uh, is frictional force is useful and sometimes frictional force is harmful. So these things we got learned in this first session. So we have been learned uh, about the definition of friction in detail along with the examples after that advantages and disadvantages. So dear friends, in my next session, very interesting topic I would like to teach you about the three different types of friction. Thank you very much.